Hey guys, my name is Minas, and today we're going to be talking about the embryological development of the middle and the outer ear. And I've broken it down really simply so that anyone watching should be able to understand what's going on by the end of it. And we're going to be breaking it down a very quick, simple introduction to embryology. So if you have no idea what embryology is, then you will by the end of this video at least. So let's start at the beginning at the blastula. The blastula is a ball of cells that's the product of fertilization when a sperm fertilizes an egg. That a collection travels down the uterine tube into the uterine canal, implants into the uterine wall, and a process of gastrulation will form three germ layers. The germ layers are the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. And this is an oversimplification for this where we have a cross section of the developing embryo. In blue, we have the ectoderm. In red, we have the mesoderm. And in green, we have the endoderm. What do these things become? The ectoderm will become skin and nervous system tissue. The mesoderm will differentiate and it has three parts to it. The paraxial mesoderm will become somites, muscles. The intermediate mesoderm will become gonads and kidneys and their lateral plate mesoderm. There are two components to the lateral plate mesoderm, the parietal and visceral layers, and they'll become connective tissue among other things. In green, we have the endoderm, and the endoderm will essentially become the mucus layer of the GIT. And as we can see, eventually, in blue, the uh, neural tube will form from pinching off the ectoderm, and that'll become the spine, and also the GIT will form in a similar way when everything folds into each other. So that's a quick introduction to embryology. Now let's talk about the development first of the middle ear. In the previous video, we had these four pictures. We focused on the otic placode, invaginating, becoming an otic pit, becoming the otic vesicle, and then differentiating into a saccular portion, utricular portion, endolymphatic duct, eventually becoming the inner ear. In today's video, we're going to be focusing on this bottom section here. And what is this bottom section? It's essentially the pharyngeal pouch and the pharyngeal cleft. What is a pharyngeal pouch and a pharyngeal cleft? I have two previous videos, pharyngeal arches and pharyngeal clefts and pouches. I recommend that you watch those two videos for a full understanding. But still, I've made this video so that you don't have to if you don't want to and you only want to focus on ear embryology. But I do recommend you watch those two videos just for a full understanding of what's going on. I will assume that you know what pharyngeal clefts, arches and pouches are for the rest of this video. So what happens? This, these pictures, again, it's a cross section through the fetus. If we focus our attention here onto this fetus, through the otic vesicle, we've cut a cross section and we're looking at it this way and you'll see here the neural tube which is invaginating and will end up becoming the this is the rhombencephalon portion of the uh, neural tube the otic placode eventually will become the inner ear and let's focus on what happens here in the endoderm the tube the tubotympanic recess is the most outer or lateral portion of the pharynx of this endoderm cross section and what happens is that it will keep growing laterally until it comes into contact with the ectoderm of the pharyngeal cleft one, of the first pharyngeal cleft. So as the pharynx or the uh, tubotympanic recess component of the pharynx is growing outwardly, the pharyngeal cleft is growing inwardly until they come into contact. And essentially, this cleft one will become the external auditory meatus, and this combination of both tissues will become the tympanic membrane. We'll get into that a little bit more soon. Let's now focus on this purple circle, which I've drawn in there to illustrate that this is what will become the bones of the middle ear. In purple, it's essentially mesoderm. It should be red, but it's purple to make it stand out from the rest of the stuff. This undifferentiated tissue will eventually form cartilage and the cartilage will form the bones. Focusing attention now here. Let's quickly go over what everything is here. We've taken 
a chunk here, expanded it, made it right there. With this being the wall of the inner ear, this is pharyngeal pouch one with the primitive tympanic cavity, it's endoderm. This is ectoderm with pharyngeal cleft one, and this is the external auditory meatus. It's from pharyngeal cleft one. At the end over here is a meatal plug, and that should, in a normal situation, disappear by the seventh month. If it persists, it can cause deafness in the newborn, in an unnatural situation. Now let's focus on this orange and purple bit, where we have the three ossicles, and around it, in orange, we have the loose mesenchyme, which is undifferentiated tissue. We have the malleus here, the incus here, and stapes here. And this is what you are here for. How do these develop? So, high yield point is that the bones, the ossicles, are derived from loose mesenchyme or undifferentiated tissue that becomes cartilage that will become the bones. Eventually, all of this cartilage that is holding the bones, preventing their vibration and their actual functioning, all of that cartilage will disappear or degenerate, and this endoderm will fill the whole middle ear. Now, we know what's going on here. Let's focus it, tension, right here. It's color-coded. So where we have the endoderm of the primitive tympanic cavity, expanding to fill all of this space, making it free space, we have in green here that filled space. So we still have the external auditory meatus here with the mucus plug degenerated. We have the tympanic cavity here, which is lined by endoderm. And we have the three ossicles, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. The petrous bone, is of course surrounding the tympanic cavity and the middle ear and then the the stapes is in contact with the membrane of the oval window and that's where it feeds all so you get the uh, vibration of the sound coming through the ear here vibrates the tympanic membrane we notice that the handle of the malle malle malleus is in contact with the tympanic membrane and the vibrations are sent through to the inner ear. There are ligaments that are formed, tiny cute ligaments that are holding the malleus and the incus to the tympanic cavity. There are three layers of this tympanic membrane. The first is ectoderm. It's essentially skin. It's the outer skin layer. The middle bit is just connective tissue and then the inner bit is an epithelial lining a mucous membrane epithelial lining very easy to get what the tympanic membrane layers are if you understand embryology outer layer inner layer in uh, outer layer middle layer inner layer it's essentially the same thing over here outer layer ectoderm middle layer mesoderm inner layer is the endoderm Okay, to put it in perspective, if you have watched the pharyngeal arches video, here is the face and the head and neck. Event essentially, the pharyngeal arches are head and neck embryology. We'll have here Meckel's cartilage, we'll have here the hyoid bone, hyoid bone the stylohyoid ligament, stylohyoid process, and here we have the bones of the ears. I drew this to show which where the bones come from. The malleus and the incus are derived from pharyngeal arch 1 and the stapes is derived from pharyngeal arch 2. If you want to understand what these become eventually, then I recommend that you watch the embryology of the pharyngeal arches video. Let's only focus on here. Knowing the embryology of organs or bones and muscles helps you understand what the nervous innervation of each are. So since the malleus is 
derived from pharyngeal arch one. Its muscle, the tensor tympani, is therefore innervated by the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve, the third branch of the trigeminal nerve. Similarly, since the stapes is derived from pharyngeal arch two, its innervation will be from the facial nerve. Okay, that is middle ear embryology. Let's put it in perspective with everything that we've learned so far from the inner and middle ear. Let's put our attention right here. In my previous video, we covered all of this. We have the cochlear duct with its two and a half coils, the endolymphatic sac and the uh, uh, saccule, the utricles and the semicircular canals here, all surrounded in the uh, lymphatic system of the ear and bones. You'll notice also there are air cavities that eventually will, uh, will form all around the, the, forming the sinuses. This video, we spoke about how this develops. The malleus, incus, and the stapes. Sound travels from the outer ear into the tympanic membrane, which vibrates the handle of the malleolus, uh, malleus. It goes to the incus, vibrates the stapes, and goes to the inner ear. Okay, now let's talk about embryology of the outer ear. We're gonna keep it really simple. Very simple. Let's focus here. This is a growing fetus. And these numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, are the outer ear. So this whole bit of the ear. Essentially, and keeping it really simple, these six swellings will grow and fuse, becoming the ear. What do each become? If this is the left ear, you'll notice this being the eye and the mouth or the stomodium, it's much more inferior than the eye and the mouth. When in a newborn, the ears are at the levels of the eyes in a normal situation. With growth of the mandible, the ear will eventually go to the, le to the level of the eyes. So, focusing our attention here. This is essentially this. Okay. We have its six swellings, which will eventually grow and fuse, forming the outer ear. One will swell, becoming the tragus. Two, the helix. Three, the simba concha, which is the part next to the opening of the external auditory meatus. Four is the concha, which is right nearby. Five, the antihelix. And six, the antitragus. It's that simple. So if you want to keep it high yield, the outer ear is derived from auditory hillocks, from swellings. Swellings one, two, and three are from the pharyngeal arch one. Swellings four, five, and six are from pharyngeal arches two. And that's the end of the video. I've keep it, kept it really simple. In the first video, I said that we were going to make three videos, but I've managed to squeeze them all into two, keeping it really simple so that you guys understand everything. I want to thank all of my Patreons. I'm going to put your names all here right now. Um, much appreciate all of the support. I've got a website if you guys want to put something in the forum, be the first to post something. Um, please contact me if you want to talk about anything embryology or whatever. I have Instagram, Facebook, all the links are in the description. And you can also find the, the description of everything that we just spoke about in this video in the description for your own notes. If you want the whiteboard, this is for my Patreons. They get the HD quality of this, among other perks. Check it out. Thanks for watching.